हाय फ्रेंड्स सब्सक्राइब टू ऑरिजिट ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल शेयर करों लाइक करों कमेंट्स करों और रोते हो भी शी बेल आइकॉन टक क्लिक करो देवन सब कुछ नोटिफिकेशन बावर जन्ने शंगे था कौन पासे था कौन देखते था कौन ऑरिजिट ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल Dear friends, uh, my name is uh, Professor Dr. Mahul Brahma. I am uh, a professor and dean at Adams University and a visiting research fellow at Batspa University in UK. I am an author, and uh, I have been an author for a very long time. Six books old. So about me, I uh, have uh, two decades of experience. Uh, so I was a journalist. I was a chief editor. And I worked with uh, various national publications, and then I was with the Tata Group for a decade almost, um, heading CSR, corporate communications, branding, and publications. I am an alumnus of uh, I am Calcutta, Micah, University of Cambridge, Jazz Business School, Saint Xavier's College, and University of Calcutta. So I'm a PhD and a dean. So my journey as an author started a decade back. I was uh, with the India Partner of New York Times, and I was editing uh, a magazine on luxury. And that is where my quest for luxury, my my entire journey for luxury as a luxury commentator, started. So while doing my stories, I, I realized that that the literature on luxury is almost new. Okay. So what used to be called as the literature of luxury was basically, um, you know, uh, beautiful photographs and and, and and glossy pages and all that. But basically, they were catalogs. But Nobody was talking about the journey of the brand. Nobody was talking about the journey of a product, from how it came into being to how it is finally there. So that was a point where I thought that I should write more on the history of luxury. So I spoke to various people, various custodians. I spoke to royalty to understand and trace that journey especially with the indian context so for example in 1920s 25% of rolls royce sales was from india alone during that time uh, you know dbs had got its kathir actually had got its biggest consignment as the kathir uh, Kathir's biggest consignment till date with the DBS diamond 
called the Patiala necklace. So this was a necklace for the crown of Maharaja of Patiala, which had over 2000 DBS diamonds and a centerpiece of 235 carat. So that is the kind of luxury that I'm talking about and, and nobody talks about. So I, I started off uh, writing columns for the Economic Times, then for Reputation Today, then the Luxury Chronicle, DNA newspaper. And uh, I thought that it was the right time to come up with my first book. Almost a decade back. It's called Recording Dance. So I, I trace the evolution of, of luxury and, and decoding lux was a work of non-fiction and the first book for uh, the Lux Trinity which uh, comprises uh, Dark Lux which is the next book and, and it's a work of fiction but it's a work of uh, fiction which captures the dark side of luxury where it, uh, you know, the, the, the luxury product as a protagonist talks about its journey of crime, being, a, being an accomplice of crime. Uh, the third book was Lux Inferno. Uh, so, so, just to showcase it to you, uh, this is the first book uh, called Decoding Lux. Uh, and this is the third book. Uh, called Lux Inferno. So here, uh, why I'm showing you this is is that it has a significance. So it is the map of hell, uh, you know. And, and I have, uh, you know, this is a hand uh, painted uh, version of the original map of hell. So all my covers are designed by my uh, better half, uh, Sabia Sinaroy. And uh, so here, a part of it was uh, was an, a kind of an autobiography, not completely, but yes, partly, where I basically tell the story of, of my experience during my stint at the India part of the New York Times and how I myself was sucked into this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this cycle of hell, these nine cycles, and how I, I got back from that cycle. So my approach has always been academic and not at all uh, in terms of product cataloging. And I always wanted to see luxury from the perspective of different lenses. So be it philosophy, be it history, uh, be it political to some extent. And, and then, uh, so, so this brings me to the latest book of mine, which is uh, The Mythic Value of Luxury. And uh, this is also my TED talk uh, on, on the same subject. And the idea of this is that I wanted to look at luxury from the perspective of uh, sociology and anthropology. So I wanted to make a parallel with that, uh, with myth or mythology. And so in a, in a deeper study of myth, in a deeper understanding of myth, I realized that what makes myths survive is something called a mythic value. So this book is about that. Uh, there are two other books which I have written and one of them, uh, the paperback is coming out this year, has come out this year, rather. It's called Quarantined, Love in the Time of Corona. And it is basically, I had written it during the quarantine, when I was quarantined in 2020, when the first lockdown happened. So it was released during that time, the Kindle version of it, because I wanted everybody to, you know, uh, read it while they are still 
uh, in, in lockdown because these are stories of love during the lockdown period. And uh, the other book that uh, I want to talk about, which was released last year, is How to Communicate Strategically in the Corporate World, which is this book. And uh, this book basically uh, is, is an elixir of my journey as a communicator, as a communications leader. And I have made it, uh, you know, a, as a guide for CXOs to, to understand the nuances of, of communication. My journey when it started off as an author, while I was a journalist and uh, with the Economic Times at that point of time, and, and uh, you know later with uh, the Indian India partner of uh, New York Times, uh, I, I had uh, you know thousands of published articles and all that. However, when I wanted to start my journey as a as an author, it was not easy. It was a huge struggle. And, and this is my message to all the body authors. It's a huge struggle. Publishers are not kind. They make you run from pillar to post. They accept an idea, then reject it the next day. But you have to go through it. It's, it's kind of a rites of passage. That is how an author's life starts, an author's journey starts. And uh, Overcoming that hurdle, you know, you, you become the butterfly on the other side. There has been a democratization of publishing with the new age publishers coming in and that's a great news for, for all the authors. There will be challenges, there will be, uh, you know, the writer's block as they famously call it. Believe me, it's real. But you have to be completely dedicated towards your craft. For me, I write every day, between 6 and 7 in the morning, I am a morning person, so I go up, I wake up early, I play golf and then I come back and write. I, um, I write every day and I do it because writing needs discipline, creativity needs discipline. There is no other way to, to grow as an author. So my request to all the budding authors is that keep writing. Don't give it up because uh, there are challenges outside. There will always be challenges. And that's what makes it fun and exciting. You have to keep writing, no matter what. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'll share a wisdom that somebody had shared with me during my early days of writing that uh, don't worry about publishing the book or marketing the book while you are writing. Just focus on what you want to write and get it out. Okay, plan it well. But don't think of the market. Don't think of the publisher. Just get the, you know, be true to your creativity, 100%. Be honest and sincere to your creativity. So whatever you want to write, go ahead and write it. I had to, I had to change publishers and all that, but that's part of the process, you know. For me, 
what I want to write and putting it out is not negotiable. So I have never negotiated on that, never compromised on that. So I would, I would ask all the authors and uh, you know to to do that. Now, uh, I have a final request to the readers. Dear readers, please understand that you are our inspiration, you know, for us to write. We write for you. And the, the, the essence of holding a physical book is, is something that um, has no match. You know, the, the smell of a book, the, the the essence of, of having a physical book on your table, on your hand, while you're reading, the, the entire experiential uh, phase of, of, uh, of that is, is something that you can't replace. I'm not averse to e-books, I'm not averse to digital books, but I'm averse to piracy, I'm averse to getting an illegally a digital version of a book. Please don't do that. You know, the authors are, are very sincere and, and they try to do the best they can. But you, the readers, please support publishing. Please support, you know, the physical form of reading because you just can't give it up. And because of you, we survive. So my, my earnest request to you, dear readers, is that say yes to publishing, say yes to holding this physical book in your hands. <laughs>